I did to lose 25 pounds is I stopped drinking soda. And that motivated me because I dropped about six pounds in a week. Most of it was water and the bloat that comes with the sugar and all that. It doesn't matter what it was. All that matters is that I saw on the scale a weight that I haven't seen in a long time. And I kind of did it as a dare, a bet. It wasn't that serious either. So I didn't put my heart and soul into not drinking the Coke. I didn't cheat. I just went about six days, maybe seven, I think, without drinking it. Dropped weight. I already made a video about it. Go check it out. And then I chased the number. I said, well, I just came from 191 to 184, maybe 185, I don't know. And I mean, there's a float, you know, some nights would be 190. I check my weight every single night, going to bed weight every single night. So like if it was 192, which was my heaviest at that point, that was my really, that was my rut. That was when I realized like, um, shit, I'm really, I'm getting fat now. I see, but even though, even though you look on a scale, it doesn't matter. You don't actually say you're getting fat. Like you, I mean, sorry, you do say you're getting fat, but you don't see it. You see it when somebody takes a photo of you. You see it when a video or something of that nature, then you're like, holy shit. Look at that fucking belly hanging out of my, my, my stomach. What the fuck is going on? This is crazy. And then you uh, get depressed. Some people do something about it. Some people just get the fuck up and run out the house and stop running and go to the gym and never stop. It's very few, very, very few, but some do. So I, I got to put that in there because it's not the whole entire planet. I just stopped drinking Coke because everybody around me was like, ah, you're not going to stop drinking Coke. That'll never happen. Like I was a crackhead. And I wasn't really doing it to prove that I could stop drinking Coke. I was doing it to prove to people how easy it is just to drop water weight. I didn't know it was going to be water weight. So I saw 184. I'll, I remember that number clearly. And I said, wow, I'm only four pounds away from seeing like 17 something, 179, even if it's 179.9 on digital scale. That's great. And I just kept going. That's all I did. I, I didn't start a meal plan, a diet plan. I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to eat that. All I did was realize that every night before I go to bed, if I eat something, if I'm starving and I eat something, that just added weight. The amount of food that's going in there is weight. Weight in ounces and in, in grams or in, it's going to lead up to pounds, right? And then if you're not doing anything physically active, you're not gonna really burn it off. You're not gonna you know, turn that furnace on and burn off that food you just ate while you're sleeping. So you're just gonna wake up, instead of waking up at 182, you're gonna wake up at 183 or, or rather 181, because usually it's like a three pound, two to three pound weight loss overnight. So if I went 184 and it's like nighttime and I'm starving to death and all I can think about is the Meatball sub from Mandy's. Oh, help me, please. What would I do? I'd get a, a tuna. I'd get a tuna sandwich from Mandy's. Mandy's is a sub shop on the other side of the city that delivers really, really quickly. Um, there's several others that have better food, but Mandy's is good. They're good. They're all right. So I'll get a tuna, and I'll, I'll say to myself, like, well, it's just, it just hunger. And it's just a signaling process that's running from my stomach to my brain, right? And once I put food in my stomach, whatever that is, it doesn't matter what it is, the hunger will go away. Now there's a difference between be, being truly satiated, like, ah oh man, that was the greatest steak and cheese ever. Like, like you, you mentally feel good, your dopamine receptors have been hit. I'm going too far. Motivation, the ability to get up when you feel like shit, you're worn out, get on a bike and ride four miles is not a matter of me being super motivated. It's just I've developed the mindset that I recognize when I'm not doing something. 
how I should be doing it or when I should be doing it or staying on top of my game. It's more of a fear that I'm not going to stay on top of my game rather than anything else. So I'm like, nah, screw this. I'm going to take the bike. I'm going to go for a ride. And then I make excuses as well, a good excuse. Throw the camera, microphone, make a video out of it. So now there's a purpose to ride the bike. There's, there's multiple purposes now. There's one, keep the cardio up. Keep, keep, keep that motivation. A body in motion stays in motion. Also, a mind in motion stays in motion. So, which means mentally I'm doing the activity that I don't want to do. Did you know that when you do something that you really don't want to do, you have no motivation, you actually do it, that you end up becoming more motivation when you, when you do it. So if, if you really don't want to go to the gym, you just absolutely don't want to go to the gym, and maybe this will help just somebody, if you don't want to do it, and I didn't want to ride this bike today, I didn't want to do shit today, like seriously, nothing. But now that I did, I can pack this bike back up in the van, drive to Boston like I did yesterday, and tour around Boston because it's gonna be a nice 90 degree day. No, probably not. 80 degrees, something, 78 it says, I don't know. But it's a nice day. And it's basically almost, it's well, it's a mid-September, and these days are very numbered right now in September here in the northeast part of the country. I can park, I can put my bike in the truck, I can drive to Boston, I can ride around Boston like I did yesterday, like I did last week, because I just went against my will, dragged myself out of the house, put myself on a bike, rode around the city, made a video, and now I'm more motivated to make more video, to keep talking, that's why I'm sitting here babbling, and to get on my bike and do it again. Do it somewhere else, go to the beach, just, I can do it now. And that's how it works. If I drag myself to the gym right now and I actually get there and I'm lifting the weights and I'm doing the work, when I get there, I'll be excited. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to be sore or maybe two days later. It's usually like two days later that soreness kicks in. I'm going to be very, very sore. But when I actually get to the gym, driving to the gym is like, oh, excuses, excuses, just... Just go over here, man, and eat a salad, and then I'll make up, you know, whatever bullshit excuse you make, right? And I can't go to the gym right now. I'm not, I'm not even dressed right. My shoes are fucking dirty and shit. Who cares? It's not about anybody else. It's about you. And when you, and when you proceed on, on, on succeeding, and when you proceed down the path of making the choices that benefit you, that make you better and better and better, who cares what you look like right now? Because there'll come a day when you're ripping off your shirt and everybody's like, oh my God, you're a fucking God. How did you do it? And they're praising you and they're, they're, just, they're just, you know what I mean? You're awesome to people. I do it every day. My Instagram feed is filled with all types of fitness people. My Facebook, every time I open it, it's all, you know, it's all fitness related. And the people that motivate me the most are usually the females. Drugs or no drugs, whatever. I mean, they still have to work a hundred times harder than a man does. So for them to have that, that perfectly, amazingly sculpted, carved body, the amount of work and dedication that they put in is not greater than a man. I'm not putting down the man's work, I'm just saying. A guy can build muscle faster than a woman. Plus I love women and they look amazing to me and da 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 da. But I find them to be way more inspiring. You know, I look at the woman who's just amazing, just physically, just, just amazing, a goddess. And I look at that and I'm like, hmm, yeah, the Instagram's blown up because you're a female and because you look amazing, but I want my Instagram to blow up. I want my Facebook to blow up. I want my friends, my family to be like, wow, Mike, what did you do? Like, what is your secret? How did you do this? You could do it with money. You can do it with fitness. You can do it with, you know, going to school and getting the degree that everybody thought you would never do. You can do it by quitting the drugs that you're fucking smoking and, and poking and inhaling. And you can do it with any aspect of your life that you're failing in that people don't believe in you for. You can do that. You can make that happen. It's very simple. I did say it was very simple, but the fucking fact is it really is simple. It's hard to do, but the activity itself is simple. 
to get up, get in your car, go to the gym. If you don't have a car, get on a bus, whatever. All these things are difficult because you don't feel like it. It's just a feeling. It's just a physical feeling. It's nothing more. It's just motivation or a lack of. But once you do it, you know, the act of doing it, think about it. It's simple. It's not rocket science. It's not figuring out algebra when you don't know algebra. It's, it's not learning how to become an electrician. Day one, never touch a wire in your life. It's nothing like that. Not drinking a soda is just, just that simple. Just don't drink a soda. It doesn't take... Um, an appointment with a doctor first. It doesn't, it doesn't require you to go get some permit or a license. It doesn't require you to alter your life. All it does is require you to stop drinking a soda. All it does is require you to go to a gym. All right, you can't afford the gym or there's no gym around you? Do push-ups on your fucking floor. I've met people that were physically amazing because of push-ups and pull-ups. Literally, push-ups and pull-ups. I was working on a job years ago, I don't know, five or six years ago. Two dudes, I mean, tits like women in a good way. Just fucking amazing, like their arm symmetry, tricep, bicep, balance, the chest, the back, the traps, the whole, I mean, they were just amazing. And when they said push-ups, pull-ups, I'm like, what, el- what, okay, what, what else? How did you get the six pack? Six pack come with it, man. You just watch your diet, push ups, pull ups. That's all you need. Push ups, pull ups. You don't need no stupid gym. You don't need no stupid gym. Push ups, pull ups, push ups, pull ups. And then after that, years after that, I've seen that case over and over again. Push ups and pull ups, push ups and pull ups. Throw some jump squats in there, run, sprint. Well, don't run, sprint. It's just that simple. To change your life is just a simple matter of making a simple choice. It's not a complicated choice. It's only complicated because it makes you feel uncomfortable. But the activity itself is really, really simple. Like I was saying, when I go to bed at night, and I don't really do it now, but because now I'm like, holy shit, I I need to kind of start eating. Not like eating like over calorie eating, but like, I need to make sure I'm, I'm eating a, a sufficient amount of calories. I know the other night I went to bed probably with a total of 700 calories. But I've made that habit. I can do that. It's not a thing anymore. Like, like I don't get to the point where I'm starving and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, like just, you know, I'm hungry right now. But I rode a bike all day yesterday. I rode the bike today. And, and like, I'll probably do more activity. I can go eat whatever I want. That's a plus side to it as well. That's a plus side to loud trucks interrupting your fucking video. That's a huge plus side to losing another point of motivation or adding to motivation. How do you get motivated? It's very simple. Just do, when you, when you start to do the activity, when you get to that point where you're doing the activity, then you can eat, not so much a soda, but... Then you can, oh, you could. There are people that just look up Durian Ryder in YouTube. He talks about sugar like it's a freaking steroid. He talks about sugar like, like, it's a, like it's the cancer cure. But I don't know if he's a former pro rider or whatever, but he's a cyclist. He's a vegan. It's really weird. I don't know. But holy shit, man. He talks about sugar like the spice of life. And he'll show you pouring sugar. Massive large quantities of sugar into drinks and he has a bottle of water on his bike and then a sugar bottle and then his girlfriend has a YouTube video and she really does the whole eating and fitness and kind of intertwine that I'll I'll link them in the in the videos below but yeah but if you're working out if you're a fucking triathlete a coke and a pizza is not gonna do shit to you but when you're dormant and you're struggling to lose weight and your body's not a furnace yet you can't go have that pizza. I ate a pizza last night. We got a large pizza, me and the wife. And I had, I got half meatball on mine. She just wanted cheese. I got half meatball and extra cheese. I woke up this morning. I wasn't heavier than I was yesterday. I'm fine. And well, actually I was about a pound heavier from, from the pizza. But with all the physical activity I do, 
That pizza is nothing. The amount of calories that came out of that pizza, I was probably still deficient. That's a huge point to understand. If you're working out and you need 1,500 or 1,700 calories just to maintain what you're living with, the shithole that you're living with, of a body that you're living with, that you want to change so bad, but you can't, you're not motivated, just understand. If you go do something that burns off 500 calories, now you are allowed to eat 500 more calories. Do you understand? So if your normal diet consists of 2,500 calories a day, which is keeping you fat, which is keeping you overweight, but you burn off 500, you get to eat 500 more if you want to maintain. If you want to go to a 500 calorie deficit and you're starving to death, do some activity. And then you won't be starving because you'll be able to eat because you did the activity. For such a suburban, suburban like place, it's very, very city and noisy and traffic like. And people use this little circle as like a U turn. Anyways, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace. Love you all. Didn't mean to give you the finger, but I'll give it to you now. And um, I'll make a cleaner video on this whole topic and how I'm going to break down my mindset way better because I was going to do that in this video, but I didn't do it. So, peace out. I'm out.